Hey guys. G'day guys. Uh, so this week you're not going to see too much uh, sailing footage or anything cool from the islands. We're going to spend it all talking about the real cruising life for us and how we can maintain the boat and also the lifestyle along the way. Yeah, so we really hope you guys enjoy the episode. If you do, remember to give us a thumbs up, give us your feedback. We'd love to hear it in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, you have to subscribe so you don't miss out. Last time on Adventure Drift, we set out to explore one of the least visited islands in the La Paz area, Isla Sorovo. Here, we did some awesome spear fishing and snorkeling, found turtle nests on the beach, and explored the unique interior of the island. So recently we've been doing some maintenance projects around the boat like always, um, and now that we're in a city we have access to a few more materials and supplies. So that's really helped to make our life a little bit easier. And we've also really been working to try and streamline our lifestyle. The biggest unknown for us before leaving home was the maintenance and how to plan for maintenance along the way. Neither one of us are very handy, so it was all a learning experience from the beginning. After deciding to build our very own dinghy from scratch earlier this year, I think we really both gained a lot of confidence in what we're able to do, even if we are learning as we go. However, the hardest challenge for us to overcome is, has been the availability of materials, especially in the small villages where we spend most of our time. Since arriving in the La Paz area, we've found a lot more available to us and we've spent a lot of time walking around town for supplies. Recently, we stumbled across a uh, resins and plastic shop and we were in heaven when we went in there and we only <laughs> wish we'd had access to all that stuff when we were back building the dinghy. We even found epoxy resin there, which was beaut, so we got some. So due to the less than ideal materials and conditions that we had to work in, we already had a few repairs to make on the dinghy. First up, we needed to reinforce the seat, which had been starting to crack. Um, we think due to us not making the cleats big enough to sit on, and also the sports not being glued on well. Next up was putting some of the cap rails back on that had come off. Uh, we used our small supply of epoxy we had on board to stick these on, but we did it at the end of the day and it was kind of cold and damp conditions. On top of that, we were gluing uh, a teak on teak, which was a very oily wood too. I think that also played part with the bonding issues. So testing out some of the epoxy we got from the local store here in town, re-glued the cap rails on with much better conditions and also added a couple of screws on there just to add it nice and secure. So while we had the dinghy up on deck working on it, we decided to also add some fender material around the edge, which is a finishing touch that we had been meaning to do since we finished it up in San Carlos and just finally got around to doing it. Finished product on the front side anyway is the bumper. Use some of this water fire hose that we got in San Carlos and we're using the um, like pipe insulation. Puts down the middle, clamps right over the top of the rail and then we're just covering it in this here. It should help protect rubbing on the boats and uh, stuff when we pull up to them. So this material will help protect the dinghy and more importantly our sailboat Varuna from getting beat up when it's tied alongside and banging into it. Of course maintaining Varuna is always on our minds but sometimes life gets busy and things get put on the back burner. Recently happened with one of our winches, our primary winch actually seized up on us while we were sailing. Get something like this. We've got like a little socket wrench, but this big bar is probably better than a socket wrench. Yeah. Well, it just gives you. Just gives you more leverage, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
for the past couple of weeks, we've been trying to get this winch opened up, and we finally had some success with a breaker bar that uh, Hillary's mum and dad had brought down with them, and it really showed us how important it was to have the right tools around when you need them. Look at all that gunk in there. This is where you don't want to lose stuff. Yeah, look at this hill. Once we got inside to the gears, it was still a total learning experience. So it's just a lot of scrubbing and soaking everything in acetone to clean out all the salt and gunk that had built up in there over the time. And then the uh, fun part came with us having to figure out how will we put it back together. So another thing that we didn't realize would make maintaining the boat a lot easier was some dive gear. While we knew we'd have to be cleaning the bottom of the boat regularly, which can be done easy enough without scuba gear, it just takes a little bit more time and effort to get down there and scrub it, we did not foresee the difficulty of changing zincs. Hmm. And Ty quickly discovered how difficult it is to hold your breath and try and screw in tiny screws and unscrew them with an allen key underwater without dropping anything. While we were in San Diego, we picked up a used regulator and a hookah line, and we planned to get the tanks down here in Mexico. However, finding dive gear has been a lot more difficult than we anticipated. Spent a lot of days searching around town, unsuccessfully trying to find some tanks, and eventually we were lucky enough to run into another sailor who was selling his. Originally all we had planned was to have a hookah line set up, which is basically just a long hose that you breathe through from the surface. We decided it'd be a lot easier to have a full dive set up and make it uh, first of all fun for diving, but also if we ever needed to dive deeper for like getting an anchor up or something like that, it would help us out. We had our family bring down a new BCD that was purchased from the States and this is basically the thing that it holds the tank on your back and then it also helps with buoyancy when you're underwater. And then we were really lucky we ran into a couple other travelers who had some dive gear that they weren't using anymore and they gave us an amazing gift of another BCD and regulator which was amazing. So thank you to Jason Laurie from Wanderwasi. That's incredible. So now we have two full dive setups. Yeah, cheers. But we didn't know anything about diving at all. Luckily though, the good friends that we have on uh, SV Larky, Ken and Edith are both professional divers and know a lot about it and have a lot of experience. And they were happy to give us a few pointers. So uh, Ken actually spent the time with us and covered everything we'd need to know in like a regular open water paddy course. Uh, we practiced like doing our buddy checks and setting all the equipment up. Also like clearing our masks and buddy breathing underwater and, and all that stuff. It was We're actually really our, cool. Taking our gear off underwater yeah. and yeah, it was awesome. maintenance and new skills that we've been learning. We've also been trying to make everyday life more streamlined, sustainable, and overall enjoyable. And this starts with food, which we've realized uh, we don't actually need as much of some things, being canned goods. Even the local stores in like the smallest of fishing villages tend to have a couple of canned goods if we needed it. Um, and we're not gonna die by running out of food uh, unless we're doing like a crossing. The hardest part has been trying to find the right fresh ingredients to buy that last and holding ourselves back and not buying too many of them so that they spoil. 
along with the home canning that we recently learned how to do, um, Ty has also been making our own ginger ale on board, which is awesome and really tasty. We haven't made ginger ale in quite a while. One of the things that's actually been really hard for us to find has been fresh ginger. Um, couldn't find it in any of the smaller towns, but we did find some in La Paz at the big grocery store. So we've got enough, supposed to be about two cups, that's a bit more than that. So to my ginger, I'm gonna add two cups of water, about a half a cup for each two litre bottle, and I'm making four two litre bottles. And it's gonna be about a four day process. Most of that's just letting it ferment. All right, I'm gonna add the sugar, and I keep cutting the sugar down. We used to do about three quarters. I'm actually gonna do a half a cup of sugar for each bottle, right? So, the heck is that, two cups? I'm gonna bring this to a boil and dissolve all that sugar to make a nice syrup. Ginger is all uh, done, letting it steep now. I brought it to a boil, gonna let it steep for about an hour or so, and then we'll come back and um, drain the, uh, through a muslin cloth and get the syrup. Got a noisy engine running behind us. Uh, not much wind, we took the spinnaker down, and we're gonna add in an eighth of a teaspoon of yeast. And I'm gonna wash that yeast in with a bit of water. Leaving about maybe an inch to two inches at the top. All right, lid's on, we're done. Check it in two days, and then check it every day, let the air, let the uh, carbonation out every day after that. We also find ourselves uh, walking around town a lot, whether it's getting groceries or looking for parts and supplies. So we'll indulge in some of the local tasty street food. You know, for a dollar for like a taco or a hot dog is a big saving compared to the restaurants, which will be anywhere from four to closer to 10 times that uh, on the tourist trips. We're going to head into town and check on a few bus prices at the bus station. Yep, got to go check out prices and see what kind of a deal we can find. Yep, local buses are always cheaper than taxis and, and organized tours, so oh, yeah. we'll see what we can get. I solamente ico baja tours va al aeropuerto en Cabo sí. Okay, al Aguila no solamente no. a la ciudad. Sí. Okay. Okay. Y necesitamos um, comprar antes de um, el día. ¿Es, ¿Es lleno? Sí, porque es la camioneta, es shuttle. Entonces okay. se llena muy rápido. Okay. So we're always looking to save money and do things more efficiently ourselves. With the hot summer sun beginning to set in here in La Paz and in Baja, an ongoing project has been for me to modify some of the shade cloths that we have and also make some more. And this is a huge savings over what we would pay to purchase some or have someone else make them. All right, project 90% complete. So have a little finishing touches that we want to do, but it's good for now and gives us some awesome shade that we really need right now. This piece here, you can see this was our old piece from our old Bimini enclosure, which the Bimini started here, but now since the solar panels are further back, I put this on to extend it, and it seems to work. Excited to try it out in the sun. Mostly we also do our laundry by hand, which we'll do when we're outside of town, so we've got cleaner water to use. And we also have our hand ringer now that one of our awesome followers uh, sent down for us. So now we can wring our clothes out even easier. In addition to the provisions that we stock up on in town, we also try to catch as much fish as possible. Um, that's really a huge savings as meat is probably one of the most expensive items. We've added a couple of new lures to our fishing gear to try and catch some different types of fish. And also recently we decided to purchase a spear gun which is going to help us uh, be able to get fish not only when we're trolling and sailing along but also when we're in Anchorage for a few days to still get fish for dinner. Yeah, it's awesome. One of the biggest challenges that we still haven't figured out a way to overcome here is shipping in Mexico or shipping to Mexico. 
Uh, I know a lot of you guys have asked us about this and we still don't have a really good solution. As those of you who follow us on our other social media channels may know, our main good photo and video camera quit working on us recently. And since it was only six months old, we sent it back to the U.S. with family to be repaired since it was in within warranty. At first we had to deal with Panasonic to get the camera repaired, which we were told we'd get as expedited as quick as possible. That expedited process actually took longer than their standard process, of course. And then they're not apparently an international company, so they don't ship to Mexico. Uh, we had to ship it to a friend in the States who then shipped it to us via UPS. Word of warning, don't ship international on UPS, that's all I would say. Uh, it should have gone DHL, which is what we wanted. Um, unfortunately, it came UPS. It got lost before it even left the store. They found it and shipped it again five days later, and it is now lost again. Uh, we're going on a month and a half now, I think, without that camera, and it is missing in action completely, and we're still waiting on UPS to complete an investigation before they will pay out the insured value on the camera. So at this point, we're really not sure what a better solution would have been, and for now, unfortunately, we don't have good news and can't say anything good about shipping or mailing down here. On that note though, that is all for now and we will have a camera again at some point and we'll have great quality footage for you guys again. Thanks for watching. Yeah, if you remember, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, give us a comment, all that good stuff. And until next time, cheers. Adios.